Why are you failing? I'm gonna tell you why. But first, and more importantly, the tip of the day. I don't think this is intended, and I don't think it should be intended this way. However, if you go into a dungeon or a raid, and let's just say you don't have the bonus for the team that you want to use. I've tested this out with my guildies at Elegy and Requiem, and here's a super important tip, and I think that it'll probably get hot fixed at some point. But what you can do is make sure to bring your three best power level monsters. And now you have the bonus. This might not be the team that is recommended or what you want to bring into the raid or dungeon. However, I'm gonna show you something here about damage. I'm gonna use one skill and I'm gonna change it to lower the bonus. As you see here, I'm using the first skill. It's gonna do a roughly around 2300, 2500, whatever. I took out two of my monsters, my power level super low, and I'm gonna show you the difference and the damage between having the bonus and not. Still roughly the same amount of damage. You do not get penalized for switching monsters while you are in the battle. What this means is that as long as you enter the dungeon with the bonus, you do not get penalized if you go under the bonus power level when you switch monsters in the dungeon. So you can bring whatever team comp you want and still have that bonus damage taken and received. This is huge for places like TOA 200 hard where you might have a penalty and you just get destroyed because you're taking 25% more damage and doing 25% less. But if you bring in your best three monsters and get over the power level, you can get rid of the penalty or you can get the bonus. Bonus, the more you know. All right, why am I failing? There's a couple different ways to fix this. First and foremost, before you make any changes to your summon or your team, your monsters, whatever, just take it off of auto. I know a lot of you are doing that. You're not manually playing the game. A lot of dungeons and raids are capped on how many entries you can take in. So just manual. Once you get the rewards from these dungeons, you're going to make your monsters stronger, get over the power level cap, etc. And you will be able to auto it at some point. And if that still doesn't work, then we're going to talk about the three things that you can change. And that's with the power level cap, dungeon mechanics, and your summoner and monsters. Let's just say this is your best team you have. Tion, Shannon, and Helia. This is tier glands level 15, and you don't have the bonus because of your power level. What you want to do first is make sure that your summoner is the stronger element. You can change it while you're in the battle if you really need to. But going into it, make sure you're the stronger element. Tear glands is wind, so I'm switching to fire. That increases my power level by 18,000. If that's still not enough, switch out a monster for the stronger element. Element advantage is huge. Not only for power level, but just in damage and all the extra stats you get for element advantage. I'm at 301 power level right now currently. Tion 63,000 power level. My Raccoon is only 62,000 power level. However, because of element advantage, this gives me an extra 12 thousand power level still not enough to get the bonus so let's just switch one damage dealer and bam you got the bonus then when you go into the match you can switch your team to whatever you want regardless of the bonus or not go in and do your thing and look at that you beat it finally so what i always suggest like i've talked about in a previous video on who to max out in six star next always focus on your main three monster team that's your field team and pretty much your generic everywhere team then you really want to focus on at least one element of whatever make that the strongest monster you can so you can always have that monster to lean to for element advantage try to do one nat 5 of each element when you start getting into nat 5s because they give you the most power level in terms of like skill ups and runes etc the second thing is dungeon mechanics what may work in one dungeon may not work in a different dungeon. Just for example, the difference between Laboratory of Madness and Lava Cave. If you bring your field team of like Kona, Mia, Shannon, and Asalia and your summoner, it probably won't work on either of those because each dungeon in this game and raid have different mechanics 
The best thing I could suggest to you is obviously A, look up guides, but B, go into strategy info and strategy tips. Look at the boss info and just read it. He deals electric shock. Photomia removes electric shock, so that's good. It applies defense up to itself and continuously recovers its HP. So you bring a heal block and someone that can maybe remove the defense buff or just do a defense break. Look at all its skills. You can silence it, you can provoke it. When his HP falls to a certain ratio, and applies Endure. So you need a buff stripper or someone that can ignore Endure, like Lupinus, for example. You gotta know the dungeon mechanics and bring in the right team comp for those mechanics. Lava Cave. Damage from skills don't work. As you see here in the strategy tips, he takes less damage from skills and more damage from basic attacks. He takes 99% less damage from skills. So you need basic attack-based monsters. If any of your teammates don't have beneficial effects, it will cleanse itself and apply a beneficial effect. So you need basic attacks and you need buffs. Of course, there's guides on every single dungeon out there, but these guides, even some from myself, don't even cover every single monster you can bring into these dungeons. Now, you can definitely ignore some dungeon mechanics, don't get me wrong. Like, if you do more damage than he heals, you don't need a heal block. Or if you have a damage dealer that applies bleeds, bleeds slightly reduce the amount of healing to the enemy. So bring in that. You can ignore the heal and just nuke the boss down. My suggestion to you and team comp building for any dungeon and any raid if you can keep yourself alive first try a speed nuke team this pretty much ignores most mechanics but if you kill the boss quicker then he doesn't have time to kill you if you see that you're dying at a support if you see that you're still dying at a second support or just look at the strategy tips of the dungeon mechanics and build your team that way. Last but not least, it's your summoner and your monsters. Depending on what summoner you use, are your account skill points applied properly? Like I said, it really depends on your summoner, but like me for Orbia, I went full summoner damage, and then I went into monster tankiness in the beginning. Now I'm putting more points into my monsters damage, and you can always reset this too if you click the bottom left, and you can reset it. Is your skill tree proper? Did you apply the points where you should have. I did a video on how to build Orbia, Cleef, and Kina. If you want a reference where to put points, I talk about those in those videos. Are your stats good? Are you an Orbia with 250% crit damage but 40% crit? Do you have the proper gear? Do you have crit damage in the necklace for Orbia? Do you have attack in the bracelet? I like accuracy in the ring. I talk about Orbia stats, but you need attack, crit rate, crit damage, accuracy, and then you get into survivability stats. Stats. Is your gear leveled up? Do you have room to improve in gear stats? Depending on where you are in progression in the game, you at least definitely want to get these to plus nine so that you get that extra substat roll. Or if you get really good rolls, you can even try to get plus 12 because that increases the main stat. And when you get the plus 12, you get another substat roll. Does your weapons have gems in them? Does it have effect stones? Even if it's not the ones you want, just put the small cheap ones in there just to increase that power level monsters are your monsters fully skilled up this is by far the most important for monsters then runes then awakenings the amount of damage between a level one third skill and attack modifiers to a maxed out skill modifier is a huge difference. Even on your supports, when they're max skilled, they heal for more. Their buffs last longer. Their buffs are better. Make sure they're at awakening five at the least, but make sure to awaken them as far as you can. Awakening five gives them either A, a new skill, or B, an improvement to a skill. Make sure the rune quality of your runes are as high as it can be. If your runes aren't leveled up, level them up the plus nine or plus 12. If they're really good runes, plus 15 them. Increases your power level, makes them stronger, etc. Make sure all your runes on your main monsters have effect stones and have enchants. Once you do all of these things combined and you're 
still failing, then that means you're probably close to mid or end game. And you just gotta wait to get the right nat fours, nat fives, etc., and just max them out and, and do what you need to do. But there's still one more thing that can help food buffs. Eat some food. It doesn't increase your power level or anything, but it's stats. Use some health potions, use some monster HP potions. Use your resources wisely. And that's it for today's video. I just wanted to make sure I have a video out there that you can reference if you're failing and don't know why. Hopefully these tips can help you. And if you like my video and like all my content, sub, like, ding, ding, bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.